and welcome to the My Wish Sunday Race Club. With four race starts, we're going to start with our category four riders, then three, two, and one. Our riders lined up in yellow, that is our category one riders, in green, our category two, in blue, category three, and category four in red. Loads of power coming out, six watts per kilo, and this is going to make the riders work, but every time they accelerate like this, they're going to be eating into that time gap. They started with five minutes, they're now sub four minutes. They've gone for the move off the front and ripping the race apart. We're coming up to the elephant rock. We've been <laughs> racing for one minute, 40 seconds. We're 1.2k in, they're and nice. already it is absolutely flat out in the men's racing x100 and ss the two uae clan team riders have now got 12 seconds on the rest of the gap they are absolute consummate users of the sprint two leaders david goodall and simon acker they have a slight gap back to esteban ruiz who is chasing he's not all that far behind at the moment but the big chase group are at 18 seconds at the moment. Leading riders in category four and three on the climb in the cave climb at the moment. Our category four leaders on the climb. They are currently at 42.7K. Acker is winding at 10 and a half watts per kilo. Now 11. This is a big, big kick. He's got to hold this though. Can there be a response from Goodall? There is. He's coming at 10.6. Has he left it too late? He has. Simon Acker takes the win here in category four. And a welcome to the My Woo Sunday Race Club. What a great race by Simon Acker listening to the Ministry of Sound when he took that race win. Well, he's on the Queens of the Stone Age. Can he belt out a rocking tune today? I can't wait to find out. The question is, will it be more Led Zeppelin or will he dive like a Led Zeppelin? We will find out. My name's Mark Payne. I'm here in the studios with the one and only the person with all stats and information. It is Emma Martin. Emma, hi. Hello. Nice to see you all. I'm wondering today, Matt, is will our riders' legs be singing as well? Because they're heading to Australia, you know, and Mount Pleasant. Well, that is on the cards for the men today. Well, let's take a look at where we are heading over in Australia. This is one of our two regular courses on here. Uh, and I actually like this one, probably best of all, uh, because it's evil, it's nasty and it's steep. Emma, take us wow. through the route quickly. 45 kilometres of racing, 704 metres of climbing and three category four climbs today. It is the Wollongong climb, regularly known as Mount Pleasant. It goes up, it drops down and it kicks again. Maximum gradient today, 17. 15% on that climb and our men they will do it three times and on the third ascent the checkered flag is at the top this is such a hard race course because those three climbs combined do not equal half the total climbing because more than 50 percent of the climbing on this course is in between those climbs today this is one where I mentioned the legs will be singing. They will indeed. Have they got the lungs to be able to make them work all the way to the finish? We'll find out. The key on this course is that climb in red that you can see in those three occasions. And it is a mountain top or a hilltop finish, depending on what you scale or you class as a mountain or hilltop. And I guess it depends on where you live. If you are somewhere very flat, that might be a true mountain top. If you were sort of born in the Himalayas, this definitely isn't. We've got riders from around the globe in all four of our race categories. Category one in yellow, category two in green, category three in blue, and category four in red, who will be our first riders away. A really stacked race field in all of our categories in our men's races for qualifier number four. Let's take a quick look at the teams in the racing. We have got level up racing. Mohamed Mokhtari, uh, Rafael Montaya in there. The Mighty Ducks, well, they're going to be led by uh, Johnson Kutab. We're going to have the power team. They've got Jeff Rooney here, as well as Joshua Kalangad. We're going to have the Anzacs. Well, Neville Ross and McMurtry have both been on absolutely stormy form. And the upcycle team, well, they have got strength in depth. Zanaska, Schoberg, Lloyd, Kalman and Mayard all down 
on our start list today. And they're just some of our riders who will be taking to the start and heading out here in Australia. A quick reminder, the field's much bigger than just our teams. And remember, of course, today it's about individual wins and it's a good hit out to practice those race starts. The final seconds tick down in the final qualifier for March on the My Woosh Sunday Race Club. And away go our category four riders. 49 riders on the start sheets today in category four. Neville, Ross, Calman and Acker all having wins this month so far in the previous three qualifiers. Are we going to see a different rider on the top step today in category four? Or are one of those three riders going to double up today? Well, the pace is fast out of the start pen. It's Cronje who is pushing on here. Kalman in two. Uh, Navarro is in three. Newman is up there as well. But they're letting Cronje just hang himself out off the start pen at the moment. They're coming out fast, but it's flat, flat, flat in the very early early stages from this start pen mat before well we know there's the kicker into town there is indeed it is indeed flat mat uh, it is a very very smooth on the way out now simon acker very very quickly spinning his way up to speed here now looking good he's absolutely flying last week but we have a real mix of riders don't we out there uh, on the uh, on the bike and uh, out and round the uh, circuit and uh, in terms of winners, Emma, over the last uh, over the last few months in Category Four, mm -hmm. we've we've got quite a few riders from all around the globe. I mean, we've got Simon Acker here in New Zealand. Um, he's uh, a regular rider. I mean, he's been riding since he was thirteen, so a lot of time on the bike, but clearly settling into my wish sunday race club oh yes we've had some um, phenomenal variety of winners uh, in uh, category four from calman to dadson to mayard to uh neville ross to acker to quadrelli to cridland you know connell as well peter connell's had a win too mm -hmm. so a real real variety of people taking that top step in category four in fact matt this month so far we've had three qualifiers this month 11 different men have taken to the top five podium in category four so far out of a possible 15 and uh, Mark Danson, one of those riders who I'm expecting to be up there on this course, particularly today, really coming to the fore early on and putting some pressure on at the moment. And Kalangad, another rider who's always seems to be up there or thereabouts, really working hard at the front there. We've seen big number seven, eight watts per kilo coming out on that little bit of the kick at the very top coming over. But the group is staying together quite a lot here already. Now, sometimes we've seen that break, that split happen on the way through. We've ridden this course a lot. Do you think the amount of times we've ridden this, people are now getting wise to how to ride this? Well, I think so, yes. And I also think what we're seeing is a lot of new riders who are coming in and doing their research. They're watching the previous shows on the My Wish YouTube channel or on Twitch TV, and they're learning and understanding the routes because there are some real skills. You need to know the routes. You need to know about momentum. You need to know about when to attack and how to stay with the group because this is hard racing. And whilst that group stayed together on the uphill section, take a look at what's happening at the moment. Daniel Valencia is on our screens at the moment, but you can see that group of category four riders being split on the downhill section into what looks like around four groups at the moment. I think we're going to see the first three of those all push back, but whether that rider on the back can get back on, that is another matter because once you lose the group here, the effort to get back on is so hard. It's just almost impossible. It is, it is an incredible ass to get back on. And whilst we can see riders uh, on the screens, on the dots getting together, when you look at backwards behind them, it is a much more oh, yeah. strung out uh, affair. Let's see if the Category 3 riders are going to match our Category 4 race start here today. Because Category 4, whilst it may not have been as furious from the pen, it's definitely uh, accelerated over the ramp. Now we have our teams in action. Cadiz, Scretting, Moreno and Gates of the Draft Squad will be looking to take away top spot from the goal grabbers led by uh, Ryan Giuliano. 
the Italian Espressos we know are going to come out strong and uh, hard from the uh, gun. And Kegula and Bala, the two riders leading uh, their charge. Level racing, well, they are here with Strength Index. We have got Eric Rimborg. We have uh, Mia Malice. We have uh, Thierry Bassetti. We've got Yeda Estevan Perez. And we have the one and only, the living legend, the man who's become a verb, Luke Allport with us as well. And if they can't manage to make it stick, well, maybe it's going to be Jose Rodriguez of the X-Pro squad who's going to take it away from our riders in the Italian Espresso who have numerical advantage in terms of team riders today. But, of course, this is a qualifier, not a final. So as the riders head out from the start, this is going to be about making sure you stay in the pack there will be team tactics that will be re riders who haven't declared themselves in for a particular team who may well be riding for them. And that is one of the great things about the qualifiers. There's always that element of chance, particularly given the strength of the riders. And it's a big field. It's a huge field, and we can already see a split. So take a look at the bottom left-hand side of your screen. Uh, we've got a bit of a split there at the moment, but 52 riders on the start sheets today. This is our biggest race category today. So a really big field. Now, last time we were in the Wollongong course, category three men, we saw eight seconds separating the top six riders over the finish line. So the strength and depth in category three, for me, is one of the strongest fields that we see. So Giuliano's had a first and a fourth. Rinborg's had a third. Largo's had a second. Dijic has had two seconds this month. Sanchez has had a fifth. Yeast has had a fourth. Messer has had a first and a third. I can keep going. Nicol Cansara has had a first and a fifth. Kusumano's had a third. Connell's had a fifth. The strength and depth in this Category 3 field is phenomenal. It is indeed phenomenal. And at the moment, we've just seen uh, Mia Malice in here, who uh, we know is going to uh, be uh, really uh, trying uh, to take this uh, uh, out here. Uh, one of our uh, real strong riders for the level racing squad. And great to see the team putting all their names down and uh, getting themselves up there. It is in really, really important, isn't it, to make sure that you get that team tactics practice and that you've got that communication. Because almost... As much as the strength of the team, the quality of the communication between the riders is, is possibly even well, more you know, important. Do you know what else I think is important? The community established between the team riders as well, because that for me is absolutely crucial. Uh, you know, they not just come together to race at the end of the month, they are together all month. They support each other regardless. You know, someone can't ride, somebody else steps in. We saw that the other week when um, Allport didn't lead out Rimburg. Uh, Cy Bradley stepped in to do that for him because he couldn't race that week. So that that community, that help, that strength and depth. Uh, and we see some of these teams now forming around a group of riders um, and that community really, really establishing. Other teams we're still seeing come together specifically for the final. And I think it's really interesting in the dynamics. If we think about the category one men, for example, those teams are now pretty much set. And we see that action week in, week out. And I'm really looking forward to seeing that, that type of teamwork and team support and team community come through some of our lower categories as well well we're going to see how that goes one man who's been in a team for a long long time uh, alicia caligula here from the italian espresso squad we know that the italian espresso squad are strong they are known for being aggressive riders for having great race tactics they do try to really mix it up as well which is always good to see uh, as they go in and through and uh, uh, good to see you let's okay that in uh, the castelli top there so uh, yeah. absolutely bang on uh, trend there uh sat there and that certainly uh, looks pretty warm where he is we'll see how he's got he's not looking too concerned at the moment this is this is pretty comfy for him. You can tell that at the moment. Oh, I don't know whether... Oh, you can. Look at the face well, there. He's not suffering yet. Well, he might not be suffering yet, but the pack is moving nice and strongly. You can see in that category three race up, blue jerseys really stretched on the bottom left-hand corner of that screen. It's all right, Matt. I was just thinking about putting an espresso into my recovery ice cream later. That was, oh. uh, that was the thought I was uh, <laughs> I'm liking that. With. I'm uh, liking that. This group moving really strongly so there are category three riders they are out in front so five minutes separating categories four and three ten minutes between three and two 
five minutes between two and one. And as we see the riders, they've gone through the city sprint, the city beach sprint at the moment. And it looks like uh, Lovno going in through first in front of Sean Driscoll, who was absolutely yeah. flying uh, last week. He's uh, clear of uh, Jocker Bonus, then Caro, Tarich and Zimail. Uh, Sean Driscoll has had a great start to riding in the Sunday yeah, race. It's not has. just a look at the Irish. No, 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 no. And um, we've seen Birdie and Driscoll come into the women's racing. Sean Driscoll, really good to see coming into the men's, but obviously loves a sprint. He does clearly uh, enjoys stretching his legs out, and that is something that some riders like. Now, the pressure that is being put on has broken category four into about four groups at the moment. It's yeah, breaking category at... two into two major groups at the moment, if not three. So, just have a look. Sorry, category three into uh, two groups at the moment. Three, category three, two groups, not category two, three groups. There you go. Uh, it's only numbers. And anyone who's watched the show regularly will know that Emmy's here to do numbers oh, and I'm here to do words. That's kind of how it works. I'm laughing because I'm giving Matt hand signals across the studio because his numbers are in the wrong way round. And he can't even make head nor tail of my hand signals, can you? They weren't the best of gesticulations, <laughs> let's say. I'm used to single digits. Oh, right. <laughs> So, whilst Emma tries to recompose herself on the other side of the studio, I am going to just do a little bit of housekeeping here. So, a massive thank you to everybody in Category 3 and in Category 4, who, particularly Category 3 and 4, who have been in touch. I know that the team at Race Control have sent out an email to all Ooh, of our yes. riders uh, asking for information. Everybody who has responded, thank you very, very much so far. If you haven't done so, you're thinking, oh, I'm really shy. I don't know if they're going to talk about me. Please do send in those emails to Race Control. Get in touch with Emma at Biking underscore Emma on Instagram. Get in touch with me at Matt Fix a Pain all over social media. Whichever way you're going to do it, but do let us know. Things we'd like to know. So we do get asked what would we like to know. We'd like to know where'd you come from? So what sort of riding have you been doing? Are you like Henry East, who's been a bike mechanic for the past 30 years and he's now building timber framed houses, for example? Are you somebody who's been a mountain biker, a roadie? Are you somebody who's never ridden anywhere but on esports? We'd love to know that. We'd like to know what your favourite route is to race and your favourite route to ride on my whoosh. So your favourite routes, one, to ride it, two, to race it. Then... <laughs> We'd also like, there's another two things we'd also like oh. from you. And it's complicated, this. Who you are, what you've been doing, where did you come from, which routes you like racing, so that's another two. We'd like to know music. What do you listen to? We mentioned at the start of the show that uh, Queens of the Stone Age was uh, Simon Acker's favourite uh, uh, today. He's changed that because he does normally listen to people like Led Zeppelin and uh, sort of a really rocking tune. But uh, you might be into classical music. It might keep you calm until the key moment when, you know, you might be listening to the Ride of the Valkyries or something like that. Let us know what sort of music you're into. What do you listen to when you're out and riding on racing on my wish? And then last but not least, this is one from me. Let us know if you have a pet. I happen to know, for example, that I, I know this is this really important. This is about people. They're, they're not just avatars. They're real people who ride on esports. We, I would like to know. So if you have a Flemish uh, rabbit, for example, that weighs in at 35 kilos, please let us know. Most dogs don't weigh that. If you have a dog like we do, I, I have a a uh, German short hair pointer called Indy, who's an absolute lunatic. In fact, he gets himself into trouble all the time. Let us know. We want to know a little bit about you as a person as well. So what you want to ride, what do you like riding, what do you like listening to, what pets you got and where do you come from? Anything else other than that, don't bother sending it in because we don't need to know. <laughs> Those are the key essential things to start off with. Then when you've said that, we'll pop you for loads more information. Don't worry. It all stays with us and the team at my wish. It won't go any further. So, But don't tell us what your mother's maiden name is, no! what your bank account details or your are, or your date of birth. <laughs> we really, really don't need to know any of those details, but please do get them in. So send them in to Race Control. It will get to us through them. If you want to do it by email, if you want to do it by social media, it is at biking underscore Emma and at Matt Fix a Pain. Do get in touch. Now, 
one of the key things that we have been seeing is that we have been seeing a lot of the riders putting in what they're up to and where they're riding on Saturdays. So that's going to keep on going. So please keep those coming. That was great as well. Right. That's all the housekeeping I'm going to do because we're going to go into category two. We have some amazing riders in category two, a really combative category with the Road Warriors, Henrik Oya, Alinda Milostic, as well as Peter Milostic riding for them here today. We have got the Wattage Wizards which is Bengstead, it's Mayor, it's Ritter and Don, a real big hitting team. Will they be able to cast a power spell on the UAE Falcons? We will see Ahmed al and Zed Hamden representing the UAE Falcons here today. And what's up? Well, they're being led by Ivo Schur, but this is a packed field. When I was going through the riders and putting my notes down on the start sheets, I actually ran out of colours and I ran out of asterisks to put down on there. And I had to start uh, using different symbols. We'll see which of these riders has got the winning number one symbol in front of them at the end of the race. We have 45 kilometres, 704 metres to go. They're on the way out, being led out by Philip Graves, a.k.a. Phil Graves, a.k.a. the man who may well be in at the finish here. He knows his course really, really well indeed, but he's got some big names to watch out for. Ivan Newkey, one of those riders that I have uh, marked down on my star sheets, Emma, I'm sure you've got a lot of details, not just on him, but of all the key riders. Yeah, I do now. Kayin, really strong gombe, riding really well. So is Kranich, so is Gallo, so is Kano. Uh, Mendakowitz riding strongly. Graves has had a second place this month, as you've mentioned. Coinston has had a fourth. Now, last time the men in Category 2 were on the Australian Wollongong course, it was a six-up sprint to the line. Now... You might have looked at the profile a little while ago and say, how on earth could it be a six-up <laughs> sprint to the line when it tops 17%? Well, it was, and that's because they are so strong in their climbing, this group, uh, this Category 2 group of men. The uh, team competition last month was absolutely phenomenal. One, two, three, four, five teams separated by less than a minute because the Category 2 riders are so close together. These riders are knocking on the door of Category 1, and you can really see the strength and depth here. We're in with Carl and Kayen, uh, here at the moment on the bottom of the screen, but it's the Category 2 riders who are coming up and across the bridge. They're about to take the left-hand turn on the bridge, then the right-hand turn, which will run them onto the climb into the city. Now, we've seen our earlier categories, Matt, split on this climb and then particularly on the descent on the other side. Are we going to see our Category 2 pack do the same? I cannot imagine for one second that Category 2 are just going to roll to the top. The problem is, is you don't want to get left behind, so you start pushing on the pedals. Everybody does exactly the same. And at that moment in time, when that happens, that then means it strings out. They are a little bit more cynical, I think, and they're a little bit more measured in their effort. The most measured generally are Category 1, who generally only push in for the kill. However, that didn't happen last week. They were absolutely, I don't know what was up with them. They all just, just decided they were all going like, out of, like out of rabbits out of a box. We'll see if that's going to happen. Category 4, they usually are fastest starters, but you can see it's a big bunch here. We are on the climb Fine. of... Uh, uh, Wang Gong here, we're going our way up. This is part two of the climb here. So they've done part one, they've dropped down, they're now on part two. And then they're going to take the right-hand turn just after the finishing banner, which will be the end. So they're going to go through the banner three times. First, part way round here. Then they're going to do another two full laps, which will make three passages underneath. David Goodall leading them up here. Goodall was on storming form last time. Uh, can he repeat that? They've not broken away and gone clear. I think they're being watched a little bit more closely now. Well, three times they go up this climb. This is the first time for Category 4. Category 3 are not there yet. Neither is Category 2. Category 1, well, they are down in the start pens, still waiting to leave. And that doesn't mean they won't be the first to finish because Category 1 are our elite riders. They are the riders who are expected to perform the fastest, to climb the quickest descent, the most skillfully, and use the momentum on the course, use the terrain to their advantage. We're going to see if that is going to be the case. Category 1 
are a star-studded field. The real who's who of uh, eSports cycling. The Coalition Alpha Jaw squad, you may well have seen a lot of press about them for a reason. Daniel Chirrut, Michael Kaminsky, Ollie Jones representing them here today. They are missing one man in action. I'm going to let Emma go through them and say where about they are. Paint toasted squad. Well, we've got uh, Arnie Jacobs, Jacob Bjorkland. We've got uh, Mikhail Plantero up against the uh, Sweet Potatoes team. Vidal Mare leading them out. Vidal from Norway. And the UAE clan team. So we've got SS, Pablo Popovich, Mr. X100 and Michael Nudson all down on our start list here today. The UAE clan team have had some amazing battles with Coalition Alpha Jaw, but Alpha Jaw are weakened. They are missing a rider, Emma. They are indeed, because... Uh... Fujasin is on his holidays in the Canary Islands. Uh, if you've been uh, watching his social media today, he is not on the start line today. The group on the start line, new riders, which we'll talk about in a little bit, but their final seconds tick down. Away go category one. This is qualifier number four in March 2024. This is the Sunday Race Cup, and these are our category one riders. Now up and out of the start pen, they are swinging out towards the city. Well, it's going to be interesting. Will Pablo Popovich top the standings like he did back here in February when the men finished in 65 minutes? Popovich took it from Kaminsky, from Safra Zaidi, from Osborne and Jones, but just four seconds separated those five riders. There indeed is Ollie Jones. Uh, he's in the pack and he's on your screen at the moment. Is he going to pick up a top five today? Well, I think it's it really possible. And he's a rider who's really been focused on my wish and on esports racing. A, a great podcast uh, to have a listen to on the, the Zemunike, the latest episode. I think it's episode number 39, if I think, if I remember correctly, uh, on the, the uh, Zemunike. I, I've lost count of listening to uh, so many. Um, I'm a bit of a podcast fan, as I'm sure all of you know. Um, he, they were really interesting to hearing him uh, talking with his teammates yeah. and uh, Michael Kaminsky and co. Uh, the way that they are all really focused and the numbers that these riders put out now because they are esports specialists are phenomenal and really show that the the esports has developed to the point where riders now are specialized and you almost you don't have to specialize but you do if you want to be in the chance of category one well i have to say that's the bit i actually enjoyed the most about the podcast was actually the discussion about being esports specialists and what that means in terms of the type of training that you do and how you how you focus what you're doing on a platform rather than out in the hills and the mountains and the roads in real life but i also love the fact that we see riders on the my wish sunday race club coming from all types of backgrounds you know we've we've had skaters we've had rowers we've had inline skaters we've got mm -hmm. mountain bikers we've got triathletes we've got dew athletes we've got people who have only ever ridden a bike on my whoosh and that's, that's for me yeah. the mix of what we have here is absolutely fantastic it is indeed now our riders are heading out there currently just making their way in through the sprint area very shortly but it looks like an attack from greg freeson at the moment in category two here he's going to be neutralized i suspect mm. he attacked up that climb over the top and just dropping down here but he's wanting to make it hard he doesn't want this to be just a roll to the hill and then a climb and different things physiologies will suit different parts of this course because <laughs> if there's one thing we know about this course it is constantly changing the flattest longest uh, straightest section is the section past the pens yes. when we do everywhere else basically it's either going up down left or right or, or a combination of all those in quick succession and that means that this course is one for riders who can vary their pedal rows quite quickly it's one where riders need to have a good power range so deliver power right the way through those revs as well it's no good being able to rev at 180 watt 180 revs a minute if all you can kick out is 50 watts it's not going to work just spinning your legs at speed is not good enough you've got to deliver power all the way through and it's going to be really interesting to see who can do that because this course demands i think very quick reactions because of the change in terrain it's very fast and it, it demands a little bit of anticipation by having ridden before yeah it does it really also demands 
a real sharp mental attitude as well because you've got to you've got to watch continually you cannot make an assumption that the action is going to happen on those three climbs there are so many gradient changes between those three climbs that actually the attacks they're much more likely to come in those intermediate sections they are and that is one of the reasons i think that that it is a great racing route and that's why we want to know what is your favorite race route and your favorite riding route it's a they hard are very racing different things route. it is a very different it's a very, yeah, it's very hard. difficult and a very hard racing route this course i think i mean belgium is probably in terms of racing my favorite course from a racing standpoint but this runs it very close there's some really really tough ones from a riding standpoint that's very different because you want to go out and ride you will want different targets different things out of that and that's one of the great things about my wish and it's one of the great things about all the different races that we started to see on here this actually is our penultimate show before uh, our end of two years here on uh, uh, my wish we'll be in two years next full show a uh, full two speed events so, yeah we've been talking about riders racing on the sunday race club so expect a little bit of nostalgia next show i warn you now uh, because <laughs> we, we we may well be uh, telling you a little bit about what, uh, the very first show that we did. Uh, and it's a long time ago, but some of the riders are still here. Oh, yes. And racing people oh, like yes, Phil yes, Graves, yes. people like Mr. X100, Miss SS Zach again, Net. Zach Net. Lots of these riders have been on here a long time. And that, for me, is a great way. The longer you ride, the more in your muscle memory the course is and the design. Because whilst we've got new worlds, it's ever-evolving. And, we've got, and it's, we've got lots of new courses and lots of new worlds and lots of new race routes. We also have lots of new riders in there. Yeah. But knowing it and knowing how to ride on the platform, really, really key. Now, four categories underway. We have very different distances covered. 4K for our Category 1, 7.5K for Category 2. 13 and a half kilometers for category three and for our category four they've not just gone up the hill they've gone back down again they're at 16.3 kilometers and that means that they're well on their way round heading towards their second lap and for our new viewers our category four riders are our first riders out of the start pen they start 20 minutes before category one which is why they are the leaders on the road at the moment and if you are looking at the screen on the right hand side the list of names you can see those red jerseys 38 red jerseys currently the category four race field in front of the blue jerseys of the category three race field but you can see they're coming this is going to be the first catch uh, and then we've got the category two race field which started 10 minutes after category three and then the last race field out of the pen was indeed category one and for those people who are maybe new to my whoosh and racing on sunday race club yes all riders can draft it's not a in sort of a world on your own you can draft you can pick a draft you can take some advantage of sitting behind other riders if you're strong enough to sit there so if we see uh, uh greg cadabona being picked up here if he's got the pace and power he could go with andre Dutch here who's attacking down as they come up on the rider just coming in to this little rise around the left hand turn you can do that. That's not a problem. Meanwhile, Michael Kaminsky is uh, winding it up here. Yeah. Now, this is a similar place uh, that we saw the attack from, I think it was our Category 3 rider here. And this little bit of a push just up and over the top. Free Son it was who was going on the attack. Now coming in through here, Kaminsky stretching his legs out and really starting to wind this up. So um, our riders in Category 1 on uh, the way through the uh, sprint. Now, our sprints don't count for the overall race. Uh, if you want to see how that plays out, have a watch back of the MyWish Championships about a year ago, uh, where we had the sprint jerseys, the polka dot jerseys, all giving prizes for the best riders through the fastest time through. Really, really uh, critical from a point of view of a snapshot for us to see what's happening in the races also for bragging rights because of course there's lots of people going out for that eric rimborg of course yep. a rider who goes for the green jersey along with ruben dom not to be today for uh, uh 
uh, SS, the man who I expected to be pushing on that. I'm not sure I've seen him on our race start. If he is, he's very quiet at the back of that race field. At the moment, it's Category 4 rider. That's uh, Christoph Lavno, who's gone through ahead of Damien uh, Kiesnowski. Kiesnowski ahead of Luke Allport. Eric Rimbo, the rider that we mentioned. Thierry Bethany. So those are the three riders. So they are the riders coming through. Now, Category 1 are not all that far behind. We're going to see where they have come. These are our Category 1 riders. Hayden Pucker taking the uh, fastest time through there, 23.972. You can just see, though, that Pim Van Diemen, David Tubbert, Stefan Van Elst, Ricardo Panizza, Arne Jacobs in there, but no real time differences. Point 443 separating the top nine. And here. take a look at the Watts per kilo, Matt. That is a category one pack rolling through the sprint. Not like what we've seen in some of the other categories. In fact, actually, if you take a look at the bottom left hand side of your screen, the category one pack is all on the front there, other than one rider that we seem to have distanced. And it could be that that little squeeze rather than an attack, has been enough to damage the roads to well, really stretch this interestingly, out. Interestingly, one of our new riders today, Hayden Pucker, is part and parcel of that lead group. Now, uh, the young rider, an under-23 rider, fourth in the USA East Cycling Championships recently. Uh, just a bit of a shout-out as well. Cam Winfield, one of our regular Category 2 riders, also an under-23 rider, took fourth place in the Australian Elite eSports Cycling Championships as well recently. So great to see, you know, the quality and the strength of the fields of both new riders coming in and our existing riders, because Cam Winfield has been with us, well, since that uh, My Wish Championships. And he won by 0. 0.0. The final sprint. One of a second, the, I think it was, in the he, final sprint. On the... Yeah. Not on the Australian champs, but on the My, My Wish Championships, championships yep. on the final day. Yep, a great ride by him. And great to see our riders in here. If you are a new rider joining us, thank you very much for joining. If you're a new viewer, thank you very much for joining us. Please do give us a subscribe. Uh, over 4.2 thousand subscribers to the My Wish YouTube channel at the moment and growing. And uh, it's great to see that every subscribe, every like, every follow, whether that is for My Wish on social media, on uh, the uh, YouTube or the Twitch TV Live, which is My Woosh Live, or of course for at Emma underscore Martin or myself at Matt Fixer Pain uh, from uh, Full Speed Events. Every like, every follow, it's all appreciated. Yeah, it is indeed, but uh, you won't find me at Emma Martin. Oh no, it's at You'll Biking find underscore me Emma. At Biking underscore Emma. I like to confuse people, make them work hard to find me on social media. And the passport office too. Right, so Ruben Dodd are on the way. He's on his way up this time. Don't worry, Emma's just bitter because she's still here in the UK studio waiting for a passport, enabling her to go. And part of that is just the confusion that Emma has a multitude of names and letters behind her name as well because she's actually Professor Emma Martin. For those of you who don't know, it is a real title. It's not just one we've awarded uh, from a, a university that you could just buy your diploma at. It's not true. Right, in with our four category riders. And you can see the different levels of effort Ruben done on the climb. You can see really pushing hot on here. It's going to uh, take a quick wipe off of that sweat so you can keep that temperature down. He's on the climb. You can see that uh, we've got Tarayev in here in Category 3. Well, he's in there. He's going to need to ride like Tim Merlier today. Tim Merlier has had... 26% of quick steps wins this season. There you are. That's, well, a, stat. You that's a stat for you. Uh, that's uh, the uh, shorts he's got on there. And you can see really is uh, buried himself for Category 3. Category 4, they are in a big group, as are Category 1. But Category 1 are not far off hitting the climb for the first time. Remember, the climb starts at... Uh, what it's 9.7 kilometers here today. It's a busy course. We've got lots of categories underway. Category two nearly at the top of yeah, the climb. But still a big group. They are a big group. Let's see what they're racing for. So, category four. Today, it is the final of our qualifiers. Big month because you win a lot of prize money this month because we have four qualifying races. Individual classification takes you from 432 AED for fifth to 2160 AED first. In category three, 720 AED, right the way to 3,600 AED for first. Remember, next week we have that team classification as well. From category three to category 
two we move up in prize money again so we go from 1200 ad for fifth right up to 6000 aed for first place the team prize moves from 3000 to 30000 next week when we go on to that team competition as well as our individual classification and if you are um, racing not only could you win 50,000 aed this month in the team competition if you won every one of our races in the four qualifiers and the final individually you could win 50,000 because it's 10,000 aed for the win in category one 8,000 for second 6,000 for third 4,000 for fourth and 2,000 aed for fifth place so 10,000 AD, a lot of money it'd be great to spend it if you're going to the uh, World Championships, the UCI World Championships in Abu Dhabi in October. Maybe you're going to go down to watch the Urban World Championships, which I think is in December of 2024. But you might not need to, uh, to spend it there. You might have uh, spending money set aside for your trip already, in which case you may want to spend it elsewhere. Let's go over to Emma's Exchange, da, 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 whilst we've got Emma, for an idea of what 10,000 AEDs were somewhere else in the world. Well, I'm celebrating Hayden Pucker joining us. So uh, we're on American dollars. So okay. US dollars, 10,000 AED. If Hayden Pucker were to win today, that would be 2,723 US dollars. If he was in the winning team next week, 13,000 $615. And it's well worth being in a team because it is three riders minimum five riders maximum the fastest three riders time is added together and that is what gives you your team time fastest team takes top spot second fastest takes second and so on all the way through and it's up to the teams how they divide that money up between them right in with car kane on the category two leading group on the descent down at the moment looking good as they make the way down here now uh, heading in around those turns whilst category two are diving down emma just give us a quick preview you're going to be heading over to the women's race fairly shortly and um, the women's racing it is in belgium, belgium is it not yes the women's race today is in belgium 35 kilometers so 10 kilometers less than the men they are in belgium today and a big race field in the women's race with lots of new riders joining us in fact i think the uh, USA, the time shift is really helping. We've got new riders from the USA here in the men's race. We've got new riders in the women's race. In fact, we've got the newly crowned USA female elite e-cycling champion on the start sheets today as well, as well as a number of riders who all finish in the top 10. It's going to be really, really exciting to see what happens. You'll be able to join Emma in the studios there. Emma's going to be making her way there fairly shortly because, of course, we are celebrating Ramadan at the moment. And because it is Ramadan, the time shift means that we have changed. Uh, if you have broken your fast, I uh, hope Iftar has been good and uh, you have managed to fuel up for your riding and for your racing and you're managing to get that nutrition just right for that. Plenty of hydration before uh, you are fast and, of course, afterwards. Now, our riders on the climb at the moment. Michael Kaminsky here. He's yeah. a rider who's been out in the UAE recently and uh, been tested. He's looking very cool, well, I'll isn't he? I'll tell you he? something. That fan is working hard at the moment. Currently just shy of 10% under the wheels. Kaminsky leading the group. Van Diemen in two. I tell you what, Pim Van Diemen has been having a brilliant month yep. so far during March. Really coming into form. He's had a fourth and two fifths. So podiumed every race this month now look at the pack comes streaming up behind that's the polka dot banner signifying the end of the climb segment but the top of the Wollongong climb map well that's around 200 meters further up the mountain and this is the first time some of our riders will be seeing that except having watched it on YouTube. So making the way up on to the upper sections of the climb. Big split in yeah, the huge group huge split here. in the group. The front group have got a gap and that will only increase as they go over the top. They need to stay in with the group. Johan Noren leading the way up this climb 347.888 on his way up there. So Noren, who again is on storming form road yeah, well in really the uh, Swedish Championships. Climbing, hasn't he? phenomenal. Yeah. Climbing. Brilliant riding. 15 riders in that leading group now, Matt, in category one. 
So David Talbot, uh, Jason Osborne, Zach Ness, I Savrasi. We've got uh, Ollie Jones here, Stefan Van Els, Michael Kaminsky, Bim Van Diemen. The rider Emma was just mentioning nothing to separate them. 0.777 of a second. You can see Noron wearing the skin suit, the polka dot skin suit, signifying he's the fastest rider over the top of the climb. And surely the leader and the winner is one and the same here because somewhere in this front group, that has got to contain your winner. Emma, the group behind, surely they're not going to come back, but... It's possible. Given it's who possible. is in that group, given it's Mr. X100, it's given possible. you've got Michael Nusson and Michael Plancho in here, yeah. and Hayden Puck is not that yeah. far behind, surely they can get them aside. It's completely it's, oh, possible. If you were going to pick a rider to, to be with, to get that group back, Mr. X100 would be him. Well, it's already come down two yeah. seconds since we've started talking about it. And I absolutely agree with you, Matt, because Mr. X100, he knows the dynamics of this platform. He is a phenomenal time trial athlete and he will continue to hold a pace whether the gradient goes up whether it goes down whether it's flat and the group ahead often play with each other and look at each other they often relax and try and get their heart rate down on an easier section of course x100 will just keep going and the riders who are with him if they can hang on will get that transition as well well, Michael Nusson is the rider with mistakes 100. Hayden Booker is not far behind. Plantro is in the mix as well. Unfortunately for Emma, she's going to have to watch the rest of the show to find out on the YouTube channel because she is going to be leaving. I'm going to have to uh, unsuperglue her from the chair. She doesn't want to go uh, and oh, miss out any of the action. <laughs> no, and no finding out Emma by peeking and watching in the studio too. So Emma's going to head over to studio too. So uh, we we'll just have a short break whilst that uh, Emma pops those headphones down here and heads out to pick up the, the set of headphones in Studio 2. So Emma has indeed left the studio, if not the building. Uh, we will see if her comeback is as good as Elvis's as she makes her way over to Studio 2 for the women's race. And a bit like Gent Webergham, today the race is happening at the same time. I will be joining her for the end of the women's race uh, once we've concluded the men's. But at the moment, the men's is absolutely absorbing this pursuit here. 11 seconds is the time gap to Noren and Co. in that leading group. Mr. X100, Michael Nusson, Hayden Pucker here are absolutely nailing it behind them. Michael Plantro is in sight as well. On the left of your screen, that is your radar view. He could also make contact. The leading group are the riders on the right-hand side, and you can see on the course profile that they have got a little way to go until we get to the Michael Fink overpass. That is the spiralling section of road that takes the riders in and across. It basically turns them through 90 degrees by basically doing the full 270 degrees to get there. It is not the easiest section, of course. It's a great attack point, and I don't think the riders are even going to wait because they do not want to let Michael Nusson and Mistakes 100 get on the back of this group. They've realised they've got the gap here, and at the moment, Pim Van Diemen is wanting to get onto the wheels of David Talbot, who has gone on the attack. Talbot, again, from the United States, on the attack. He is a really aggressive rider, a rider who we've seen time and time again putting in those digs. Now, it was 11 seconds. It's gone down. It had gone down to to uh, seven seconds, but Talbot's attack now is going to start doing damage to the riders who are chasing behind. This is the Vink overpass. This is the turn and the spiral up and over. You can see the gradient kicks in. These riders going over the road. They've just come down and then they are going to be trying to get onto the wheels of the riders in front. The gap is nine seconds now to Ollie Jones, the rearward of those riders. At the moment, it's Mr. X100 who's powered his way up and over, who is leading the chase. Meanwhile, Tolbert is absorbed in that leading group once again. The gap, though, it's at eight seconds. So eight seconds. They've taken three seconds out, and they're now on one of the flattest sections of the course. On eSports, as you would find if you are riding outdoors or you're riding on a velodrome, you would find that you are able to take advantage of the draft. To hide behind another rider will make life easier. The more riders there are, the more draft there is to be had. The more often you'll see the riders' numbers go into the green, where the watts are at the top. Michael Kaminsky's numbers yo-yo in between white and green. When they're green, they're good. That means he's in the draft and he's saving energy. 
So Kaminsky in that polka dot skin suit on the central big screen in the Myrish jersey unzipped here in the inset window on the bottom left hand side. They are in that lead group and at the moment Mr X100 is pulling this time gap down. He's got it down to six seconds. He's been on the front for a while now. He's going to need somebody to take a turn and come through I think and again another attack has gone on the front here. So again riders are really not wanting to let the uh, Riders behind come back to them. They're about to come past the pens. They'll have done one full lap. Remembering, of course, this is not complete laps that we do. It's about two and three quarter because we finish at the top of the climb. Two more ascents of the Wollongong climb to go. Kaminsky on Van Diemen's heels here at the moment. Two seconds to get back to Osborne as they go off the front. The riders are joining at the back. Mr. X100 will be coming back in. Now Kaminsky quickly covering the move from Van Diemen. Here comes uh, Hayden Pucker. Here comes uh, uh, Mr. X100. Michael Nusson just rejoining. They're in to the group. That catch is made for Mr. X100. Pucker is about to join in that green skin suit. He joins the yellow jizz in that polka dot skin suit of Kaminsky. And the last rider across is going to be Michael Nudson, who again is going to push right up as he joins that group. They do not want to get to, too far back in this group. You can see Mistakes 100 having to put another kick in here. If you get that to catch back in, if you don't latch on to the right riders, you can make life difficult because you don't get in. And Kaminsky and Van Diemen's attack on the front is starting to stretch things out here. This is very, very difficult indeed. Those riders are really starting to push. So, Michael Kaminsky and Van Diemen on the front here. Van Diemen in the red there. Those chevrons racing across the screen as he continues to push at the front. Mr. X100 is having to do 12 watts per kilo to get in to the draft behind. This continual attacking is making life difficult. Nudson again in the danger zone here. I think he's dropped back to go give a hand here to Mr. X100 to offer some draft to pull this group back in again and they don't want to be distanced we're taking the right turn and we're going to be on the climb and at the moment they are putting down the blows they are throwing it down this race they are putting the challenge in and they're saying if you want this you've got to stay with us we're on to the climb now Van Diemen at 8.7 watts a kilo. Kaminsky, 8.5 here, right on his heels. 9.9 for Van Diemen now. As they go on to this steeper section, and you can just uh, see that uh, Nair and Safrasini, the riders who are nearest to him, Nair at 11.2 watts per kilo. They're really pushing here to get back in to the uh, group. These are your leading four riders on the screen as we track across here. They are ahead of this chasing group that's got Noren in here. It has got Nudson in the group. They are trying to call, claw their way back to the leaders. It could well all come back together again. Wow, Category 1 is absolutely frantic. They have just completed a full lap. Having completed the lap and almost at the top of the climb are Category 4 in the red here. David Goodall in the skin suit of the best rider up that climb. It's the second time of asking. He's through the banner of the polka dot banner. He's got Neville Ross, Calman, Newman, Tortoreso with him. Pino's not that far behind. Acker is being distant, so, so Simon Acker... In trouble at the moment. He uh, needs to uh, really uh, turn up the volume at the moment. He needs to turn up the watts and he needs to get uh, the legs uh, pumping better than the bass speakers because he's got to get over the top and onto this group quick. He cannot afford to let that gap go. Eight seconds is a substantial gap and it will only open. And once you go over the top, it drops down. The speed will pick up. It will then rise again where it will slow slightly and then it drops even more. Really, really brutal racing here today in Category 4. Category 2, 3 and 1 also out on route. Category 4 dropping into the dip over the top of the second part of the climb for the second time. The riders in green on the bottom left, well, they are on the, the dip between parts one and two of the climb. I think we need to have a look and just uh, give you a quick reminder and give me a quick reminder of where we are on our course. So 
the riders in category four are over the top of the middle climb where our figure has just gone over the second of our Wollongong ascents. In the dip in that red section, in the middle, that is where category three were. They've gone up the first peak, they dropped down. That has a stretch and a compression on the group. That means that the draft opens up, the speed picks up, you can get into the draft, you can use that, use the momentum of the downhill, get your timing right, it accelerates you onto part two of that climb. They are on the climb. Further back behind categories two and one are still making the way between the first ascent and the second ascent of the Wollongong climb. And of course, we finish on top of the Wollongong climb. That will be the absolute decider. If it comes down to that final climb, you will need to be in the leading group at the moment. We are seeing another breakaway, another kick, and we are seeing riders being distanced behind the front of the pack. Jason Osborne now picking up the pace, working hard to try and close the gap down to Zach Nair, to Pim Van Diemen, to Michael Kaminsky and Said Safrazad. Four riders clear at the moment. Nair going to be a Safrazad is going to be four riders clear the group behind while well, the pressure is on and he's doing damage here Hayden Puckett now is separated by 18 seconds from the lead group the lead group have a couple of seconds on Mr X100 at the moment but you can see this chase here is desperate they cannot afford to let a group with the quality that it is a put the front go clear category one they are at action stations if not panic stations in closing the gaps down meanwhile in category two the multi-jersey wearer Ruben Dont currently resplendent in the green sprint skin suit also qualifies as our fastest climber he's on some form but they are chasing Trojanowski at the moment Mendakowicz who is up the road Rita who is squeezing on in front Phil Graves having to work to push to get back together these rises these falls as they make the way through Wollongong really doing some damage now across the category three Alex Caligula up at the front, the Italian Espresso rider now over the top of the climb. He's completed part two of the second ascent, which means we've got this dip, the slight rise that you can see coming in front of the riders, then the big long section of the descent coming up. They've got lots of category four riders in front and the riders will be able to draft. And every time you do that, you get that slingshot effect. You can rock it in and through. That is going to make a difference to our riders. Can they use that to their advantage? The first rider they will see is about seven seconds up the road. Then it's about 25 seconds up the road to the next group. But, of course, this is on a descent. It's a fast part of the road. Dydush, Kager, Kochikov, Largo, all up in this front group, they are squeezing on Nickel Kansar in here. Nickel needs to win some prize money uh, for his upcoming wedding. So, uh, Nickel, keep pedaling, mate. You're going to need to, uh, you've got a wedding to pay for, buddy. Now, say, uh, make the way uh, down the uh, straight here. It's going to be a real pursuit now between this. This is a group number two of category one riders the leaders in category one are just mixed in with the category two rider in front left hand side of your screen you can see the yellow dots starting to close in on the green dot the green jersey is going to be a juan Villada who is going to get picked up here juan Villada guarin the rider just being passed on the way through and all of the action at the moment means that as we've gone through the city beach sprint for the second time uh, Mr. X100 chasing, having to get back on. Pim Van Diemen attacking, going into fourth place. Kirstowski and uh, Lesbo, the riders who clearly are targeting that sprint at 8.8 and 8.3 watts per kilo for first and second. They're really rocketing through the sprints. However, behind, the riders know that they are racing for the overall, and that race for the overall, the chase and the break, well, they're very evenly matched at the moment. This is going to tire some legs out. We are currently at 23.1K. We're just over half race distance for Category 1 leaders. And as they come into the right-hand 90-degree turn, 
that gap still remains it's going to be at about seven seconds by the look of it just waiting for our time checks to come up but it's looking like that's the gap in category one in category two walter clay's here really working to sit in to that group really focused on the screen he doesn't want to let the gap go 38 minutes of riding 26k under the wheels for walter as they come through uh, in to the left hand turn then at 25.9 k they're about 400 meters off the start of the climb proper it comes up in front of the road you can see the uh, grading starting to kick up clay's tucked in to this group they've caught category three rider and that looks like that's going to be uh, francis uh, uh, alexis who is in that group at, uh, at the moment, Category 1 and leaders, they are the furthest back on Route 23.9. Now 24k covered for Pim Van Diemen, Safazad, Kaminsky and Nair. And a five-second gap. It is just yo-yoing at the moment. They're so evenly matched at the front of Category 1 at the moment. This is where you've got to be smart. How hard do you dig? How hard do you push? How far into the red zone can you go? before you are in trouble and you're going to blow and you're going to go back at an absolute rocketing pace. The group behind are working together, I think, slightly better. The compression as we go into the ascent, bringing the gap down, smart riding here. Arnie Jacobs has used that compression. He's gone over the top. He's going to kick across and he's going to make the junction going over the top of the climb. So use that compression. The leaders hit the climb first. It brings them closer to the chasers behind and the group behind are going to come back together because of the undulations on the course. Attack neutralized. Let's see who is going to go over the top. Is anybody going to counter attack at this point? They've all been working incredibly hard at this stage. We have riders off the back of the pack. We have a lot of the field, about 50% of the race field has gone because of the pressure and because of that constant attacking on the front in category one in category three well our leader is a ritter but you can see it's a big pack behind being led here by bendetti so a bendetti followed by Graves and matthias van he in here van he got a big old sprint on him you wouldn't want to take him in to the finish ruben don is in there proven sprinter time and time again krasnich bengston in here as well this is a real big pack. The Wattage Wizards, well represented. Dot Ritter, as well as Bengston and Mayer, all looking good at the moment. Burkhan and Kernken are the two Turkish riders in the mix as well in Category 2. But all four categories on your screen. So Category 1 at 25.5k, 27.5 for Category 2, 32.8, nearly 33k for Category Three and category four at the moment approaching 35 kilometers. That means that they will have 10 kilometers left to go. Category four on the way back on the first climb after the pens on their final run into towards the climb. Category three, well, they are just making their way along the straight. Category one have got the most distance to cover. Uh, approaching 26k for Michael Nusson. It's time to see if this kick out is going to work for him. He's gone early. We're about to hit the climb. It's 26.3k, the start of the climb. The gradient, though, already starting to lift at 26.1k. And you can see as we hit 2.5%, he's really pushing on here as we come into this climb. He's opened a gap going underneath the polka dot banner. He's got the full length of the climb to do this. This is a big move here. There's 120 meters of ascent on this climb. It's 1.9 kilometers long. It doesn't sound long, but you've got to remember that the slopes on here at the top, they are peak at 17% at the steepest section, and that is going to do damage to the riders. Part one followed by part two are tough. This is the chasing pack underneath the uh, polka dot banner onto the climb and moving well. They're closing down riders in category two. They've seen one or two riders in front in categories three and four in the blue and red respectively. And Mr. X100, as the power goes on here, is going to want to tempo his way up here at a pace that he can sustain to the top. The rider he was with, that's Hayden Pucker, has 
gone. He's at 50 seconds. We've got Panitza also at about 15 seconds down at the moment. The riders absolutely on the river all the way up. Category 1 starting to climb. Category 2 about to hit the polka dot banner at 200 metres from our finish line. And this is still a big pack at the moment. That is going to be nine riders. No, ten riders. In fact, one just hidden behind another there. So a good ten riders on the ascent here of Wollongong Climb in Category 2. Don was holding the polka dot jersey and skin suit as the rider who had climbed up. We've got the most points. We'll see if that is still going to hold as they come up onto the top. So qualify a race at number four here in March. It's a five a Sunday a month, and that means that it is going to be our finals next week. And we're setting ourselves up for an absolute cracker in all of our race categories. Category 2 reaching the top of the climb here in Wollongong. Category 1 on the descent. Pim Van Diemen in the green skin suit in Category 1. Johan Noren in the polka dot skin suit, the climber skin suit in Category 1. All with this group of leaders. The rider behind is Mr. X100, who's going to try and use this downhill to come in and onto this pack at speed. He's gone down at about 5.8 watts per kilo, but the leaders in front of him are starting to kick at 8 watts per kilo. He's going to need to hold... Hold that pace right the way up and keep it consistent to get through this group. Noren, though, on to his favoured territory. We've seen him climbing so well recently. He's on absolutely superb climbing form. He loves it when it goes uphill. He'd love it to be longer, I'm sure. At the moment, though, Michael Kaminsky. Now, oh, Mikhail Kaminsky is the man on the front. He's opening up a little bit on the throttle. He's up at nine watts per kilo. So he's attacked going over that first steep ramp on here. It flattens off a little bit. We're down to 8%, 8.2. Kaminsky it looking so smooth here. He knows exactly what he needs to push out here. He's revving at the moment. That pedal cadence, 75 revs per minute. The gap that he's opened is reasonably big at the moment. But there is time for that group to close him down. He will want to spring clear a few more riders. He will want it to be his Coalition Alpha Jaw teammates. And that's uh, Churik and Jones. Jones the most likely to be able to go with Kaminsky of the two. At the moment, it certainly looks to me like Michael Kaminsky is using these riders in front, the uh, carrot in front of the uh, rider to chase. It's that target gives extra impetus to him. He can see riders in front. He can see the uh, banner. You can see him focused on the screen at the moment. He's going to come underneath that polka dot banner. I think uh, Noren's uh, points are going to be in uh, trouble here. He's going to lose that skin suit to Kaminsky, who I think is going to take the most points here in that mountain climbing competition underneath the polka dot banner they go 200 meters to the summit Kaminsky followed by Noren there Osborne and San Francisco they're your top five it's going to be close at the top of the standings in that climbing competition with two out of those three climbs done Kaminsky's time 11 seconds quicker than Johan Noren the man who came in in that polka dot skin suit. And you can just uh, see only nine of our Category 1 riders going through in front of Category 2 there. It is a big, big gap between them. Uh, Osborne climbing well, 6.6 .6 watts per kilo going up over the uh, top. Kaminsky's the man at the front, though. So behind, it's Noren chasing Kaminsky. Noren has got riders on his wheel to help him if he can use them. Kaminsky's got nobody. He is Billy No Mates going over the top on his own. He's got to close the gaps down. Now, a little bit further up, James Kranich is doing exactly the same here. He's trying to break clear on the downhill. He's being pursued at the moment by Matthias Van Heet and Phil Gray. So, uh, uh, the uh, diesel Phil Gray's with the uh, Sprint King himself, Matthias Van Heer, a man who can ride strongly on this course. Will they be able to match the pace of the riders there with Ruben Don has shown he is definitely a rider that you cannot take anywhere. Ruben Don, though, looking very good now as they come down. They're going to go uh, around on to the uh, overpass. You could just see the bridge over the top of the riders. And that is the sweeping left-hand turn that's coming up now. That's the bridge they're going to be on very shortly indeed. 
Don leading them through a huge pack here. It's 10 plus riders coming round at this turn. And at the moment, they are going to make the way on. Don has gone from the front to the back. And now you can see the pain is etched on Don's face here. Ruben Don is giving it everything. He cannot afford to let that group go. He makes his way through. He hasn't closed down all of the riders. Mendakowicz is the rider in front, but he's gone from the back into position number two. At that moment, what an effort by Ruben Don going through there. Now, Kaminsky, what face is Kaminsky pulling? He's usually the man you wouldn't want to pay, play poker against because Kaminsky doesn't give anything away. At the moment, he's opened up four seconds. Now, five seconds on Johan Noren. Kaminsky is continuing to push here, but this is a good chasing group. We have got what is going to be six category one, if not seven category one riders pursuing one lone leader. And that is a Big attest, they're pulling back, but it's not impossible. But they still have to make their way round to the base of the climb and up onto it. Category two, further down the road, 33 kilometres covered, 38 kilometres plus. Now for the leaders in category three, they are working their way on the way up and through. And then we can see the Category 4 riders in there. Now, these are our polka dots jersey wearers we're focused on here. We've got Johan Noren, who we saw held on to the climb. We've got Ruben Dunn, who's got more jerseys than he knows what to do with. He'll keep it nice and warm in all of those. Henry Eason here. Henry clearly being suited by the new way of life, being a timber framer, not just a mountain bike mechanic. Uh, may well be is uh, working for him. And, of course, we've got David Goodall, a man who showed last week he could well be the man to beat here today. And our polka dot jersey wearers are our consistently good climbers here. They're the ones who've shown that they can do it. Don in here at the moment. You saw him go from the back to the front of the uh, group. This group has picked up a number of Category 3 riders. And Don, i tell you something, that is some recovery because he's looking a whole lot calmer now than he was earlier on. This group has come down. It looks uh, to me like we've got about seven riders total in that group. They are rocketing along and they are putting riders from Category 3 in trouble. Don takes a little bit of an advantage here. This is that long straight going uh, through and past the pens. The riders... Uh, Pence on the left-hand side. Meanwhile, in Category 1, they're about to go on to the Michael Vink overpass. Van Diemen attacks over the top here. It's so named because we have seen Michael Vink take the win here before by using this as an attack point to go clear. And as our spectators cheer on at the side of those UCI banners, making the way over the top, the chase is on behind uh, they're trying to close that gap down. Ollie Jones is in here and working well. And you can see, uh, great to see riders are working in that uh, pain cave together. The uh, women's race about to get underway in various categories. The men's race already well underway here, starting first today during Ramadan. I'll be right the way through until we reach the end of the month. So at the moment, the riders are racing in a slightly different time frame uh, to our usual times, and some of those riders will be uh, benefiting from that. Some of our riders won't. So, Ollie Jones at the moment in this group, a rider for the Coalition Alpha Jewel squad. Could it be his day today? Is he going to take this win out on the top of the climb? Do not discount any one of these riders in this group. We're just uh, seeing everyone just working to stay in there. Uh, Talbot has gone on the attack at six watts per kilo. He's uh, been closed down, though. He's uh, continuing, though, to push here. He doesn't want to make it easy on this flat section. We're about to come past the rider pens. He's caught now by uh, a man for whom uh, aggressive riding must be the uh, second and third names in his uh, uh, full name because at the moment Pim Van Diemen, the ultimate aggressive rider, is on the attack again. He's got David Tobert. Tobert now at seven watts per kilo here. Can these two shake up the uh, group here? Can they break it apart? There is so little respite on this course. Wherever we go, whether it's the flat, the downhill or the climb, they are attacking each other. They are trading punches and they go over the top. Honey, Jacobs closes them down He's at six watts per kilo. He's, 
the riders are closing down. They are not easing off. And the speed of Category 1 means that this Category 2 group of riders behind them, the Category 1 leaders, I think, are not all that far behind. They are well on their way at the moment. And they're just coming around this left. And they are at 34 kilometres at the moment. And uh, it's not going to be long before they see the Category 1 riders coming up behind. So Category 2 are working hard, but the Category 1 leaders are flying behind. Mr. X100, Michael Knudsen, a duo from the UAE clan team at the moment, are giving away 33 seconds. 33 seconds to Michael Knudsen and Mr. X100. And they are the riders in pursuit behind. And you can see the... Uh, Leading group, right-hand side. I say leading group because it's a fractured leading group at the moment. We're in with Saeed Safrazeli. Well, he's got uh, Nair. He's got Jones Norren for company up the road. You can see that we have three riders. You've got, uh, well, it's now going to be four. It's uh, Jacobs. It's Osborne. It is uh, going to be Van Diemen and Talbot at the moment. They are your four riders. They've got five seconds at the moment. <laughs> it's next to nothing, but they're going to take the right hand turn and go on to the climb and as fast as the riders behind as fast as michael nuss and mr x100 can chase well you see an attack after attack going on the front it's absolutely brutal racing each and every week we're here every sunday with the my Woo sunday race club the premier esports racing here on my whoosh and you know something these riders never disappoint. They give us a fantastic action. They give it absolutely everything. It really does test all of our riders in all of our race categories. We'd love to see you join these riders. Download the app. It's out on iOS. You can pick it up on uh, Windows. The new Apple TV app is coming in a matter of days. It has not quite launched yet. Just the last of few wrinkles that came up during that beta testing. Thank you, everybody who uh, helped us. Uh, it's being uh, wrinkled out, and it will be with us very shortly indeed. Do jump on board. Download Get on board, come and have a ride, jump on one of the races. If you fancy racing the Sunday Race Club, we'd love to see you. We'd love to be uh, putting your name to some of this action here today. Please do make sure that you read the rule set, that you know what you have to do. Get that power passport that checks out your riding. And come and join Michael Nuss and Mr. X100 here on the platform. Will you be able to race as hard as them? Can you chase? Would you be able to help them get back to our leaders? The group in front continuing to accelerate away, currently at about one minute clear of our two chasers. Such is the power of the group in front. And again, another push coming from Pim Van Diemen here. This group are really working hard. They keep on getting caught back by what's left of that leading group. It's no longer four riders. It keeps on breaking and reabsorbing, but they keep on bringing the attackers back. Whoever is going up the road gets dragged back into the group behind a steadier pace in terms of a more consistent pace being set by Mr. X100 and Michael Nudson. They are the two chasers behind our leading group, still inside that top 10, but they need to keep pushing. They can't afford to go too far into the red though, because if they do blow, there are runners behind them as well. Meanwhile, on to the climb. You can see that we have got our cat Category 3 leaders here. Our Category 4 leaders are also on to the climb. Remember, we finish the race today at 45 kilometres. We will have climbed 704 metres, and our leaders in Category 3 and 4 are on to the climb. We're back with the uh, Category 1 group. They are well on the way in now, at the moment. The Category 1 are about to get on to the back. Ivan Yuki can see them coming behind. He's going to try and pick the pace up. He knows that he doesn't want to get caught on an upslope. He wants to get caught on a downslope because he's got the most chance of staying with the riders. But there's a long drag coming up here, and that is not going to be to the advantage of the Category 2 riders that are being caught because they are likely to be caught and passed by that hot, very, very fast-moving Category 1 group. And it looks to me like Ollie Jones trying to make the most of this group coming together. Jones has gone to the front. Has he pushed on out of the group? He hasn't. At the moment, it looks like the eight Category 1 riders are coming through. And to the four of that group, it may well be nine. Just taking a quick check. 
Yeah, and it looks like there's going to be nine riders in that. This is going to be a really tricky finish for them because they can't break each other. They've deposited Michael Nusson and Mr. X100, Hayden Pucker, uh, and Co. behind. The gap has opened. It has opened up to the best part of a minute already, and that means that it's unlikely that this uh, duo are going to bring back the group in front. The riders coming down this on the outer loop is almost coming in to our finish here today. It certainly isn't because they've got the ascent of the Wollongong climb to do. And you're going to take this left hand turn. Mr. X100 really keeping that pace hot. Michael Nusson trying to stay in those wheels. There are category one riders, the category one leaders. Well, they are currently at 37.7K. They hit the climb at 42.9. Our leaders on the road, though, are our Category 4 leaders at the moment. They are absolutely nailing this at the moment. They're coming up to the banner. The race at the moment is between Andrew Neville Ross, who goes underneath the Wollongong climb banner first with 200 metres to the finish line first. He's changes very quickly. Superman-esque in and out of that polka dot skin suit because he's gone back to David Goodhall behind him and Goodall needs to use his climbing abilities behind Goodall. It's nine seconds and uh, dropping to Kalman, to Tortoretta, to Pino, Newman and Rusinecker. Those are the leading seven riders in Category 4. They should stay clear of all the rest of the riders as they're on to the climb. Neville Ross here today looking good. Could it be his day here today in Category 4. The Anzacs rider pushes up to the top. He goes underneath a Ramadan banner. He's going to come into the finish. It's Andrew Neville Ross of the Anzacs who comes through to take the win on the Maiwu Sunday Race Club. Qualifier number four. What a ride. He takes the win. It's David Goodall in second place, a contender for our final. Surely he's going to lead through Matus Kalman, who's going to come through for a third place on the climb here today. They have come through in front of the riders behind Tortoretto and Pino should be the riders who are going to round out our top five. Newman in six, but behind the category three riders are coming. Kochikov leading them up at the moment. It's all action back in category one as well because category one leaders, Pim Van Diemen and Annie Jacobs are on the attack. Being answered by Jason Osborne and Michael Kaminsky. This is going to be close in Category 1. They're on the run in to the climb at the moment. Our Category 3 leaders, well, they must be nearly at our finish line because they are coming quick as well. Category 2 is sandwiched in between. And Pim Van Diemen on the attack as well. Now, here we are. Kochkov, 10 seconds up the road from Bessady. He can just about see him. Here he is. This is your leader going underneath the polka dot banner. And that's the gap back. Bessady has got a gap, but it's not much between him and the riders behind. Here they come. Three riders trying to close down. Bessady, he is in a position to the Swiss rider chasing the German in front. This is going to be so close. Kodjakov, he's got the gap. Eight seconds. Can he hold it? Who is going to take second, third and fourth? That is far less clear. This is a run for the line. Kochikov leading this out. Surely Oleg Kochikov is going to be the man to take victory today. He hasn't got that polka dot jersey, but he's going to climb this mountain at the front of the group. The gap is still holding at seven seconds. He's done enough. Moreno is trying to close the gap down. He's going to be in second. It's Kochikov comes across. Oleg Kochikov takes the top spot in category three here. It's a second place here for Moreno. Third place, I think, for East, who takes the polka dot as he goes over the top. Messi goes through for a fourth. So winners in category four in Neville Ross. We have got our winner in category three. That is Kochikov, who is going to take the wins in category two and category one and step onto the top step of the podium. Take home that 10,000 UAE. UAD, sorry, as they go in and through. It's going to be really interesting to see. Now, the race in category two has been very close. All of the riders in this lead group are capable of taking the win here. I don't think there's anybody in this group I haven't seen be in the top three of the Sunday race club. This is an absolutely class field. You've got 
both Cairn brothers in here. You've got Bengston in here. You've got Graves, Mendakowicz in here, Ritter, Bendetti, Avani. Of those riders, probably Bendetti, the rider who with the most approved here. But we will see because it's all about how much you want it. Can Daniel Bendetti of Italy now mark out the riders that are around him? They're about to hit the base of the climb. They're at 42.4k. The climbing starts officially at 42.9, but we know it will start to gradually drag up before the leaders of Category 2 get to that banner. It's not going to be long. A little bit further back down the road, Ollie Jones. In this group of riders, Category 1 catching Category 2 as Krasnich now goes on the offensive at the front here. He's opening up a gap. He's gone into the climb. Now, this is going to get him some sliding room if he needs it. It could be the space he needs to take a clean run at the climb behind Dont, Graves, Ritter. To Joniski, all trying to close that gap down. When are they going to open the throttle? And really worked. Close down Krasic. She's got the gap on them at the moment. Meanwhile, in category one, Johan Noren is doing very much the same here to the leading group. They've caught a number of riders. It's caused a little bit of confusion. And at the moment, Noren is looking like he's got a gap of about six seconds to Ollie Jones, who is the nearest rider in Category 1. Osborne now coming up to give some support in the chase for Noren. Now, Noren has been climbing like an absolute dream. He can do the long climbs. He's well suited those 13-kilometer climbs also with multiple hairpin bends. Can he use that climbing skill here today on the climb it's steep. A quick reminder, 10% on the first uh, section. We then drop down. It peaks at 17% on the second part of the climb. A little bit further on from Krasnich, who at the moment is at 9.8%. The gradient, the gap, well, you can see it on your screens. If they had a lasso rope, they could go put that loot round him and pull him back in. They're going to have to use the legs instead. And the chase is on. And Daco is Bendetti Don Can in here. This is going to be so close as they come up here. And James Krasnich is going to be pulled back in on the first part of the climb. That gap that he opened has not held. And he's now going to be in trouble. And it looks to me like Trojanski has gone over the top here. So Trojanski leading in one. But here comes the pack. They're going to go over the top. They're going to go into the descent, the final final piece of downhill before they reach the finish line. They're in to the descent as one big group. This is all going to come down to the second part of the climb in Category 2. In Category 1, well, at the moment, Noren has continued to push. He has extended that lead. It's now over 10 seconds between Johan Noren, the leader of Category 1 on the left of your screen, and the chasers behind. The nearest chaser, Safrazeli, uh, leading the uh, chase, but the rest of that group are right on his heels. They're going to be doing a very similar chase as we saw here in Category 2 when they closed down Kranich as they came in. But this is now the final section of the climb. Remember, this peaks at 17% here today. We're already on to a leg-breaking 15, 15 and a half, 16 and a half, 17%, 17.7. It just is so brutal here. You can see the amount of effort going in. Phil Gray's kicking out over 600 watts. He normally only sees that when he turns all the light bulbs on in the house. He's seeing it now as he kicks up this climb. He's got to keep on pushing because he knows he cannot let Masiek Medekowicz go clear. These are the two riders leading. They've got two seconds on the rider in third place, and that is Burt Kane. And Kane has got a monstrous kick on him. We know he can really power, but the two leaders holding two seconds now, three seconds to Kane. Ritter are currently in fourth place, trying to close down Medekowicz, the rider with the pure white helmet, the white and red, on the Phil Graves just behind us. Medekowicz starts to accelerate over the top here. Category 2 starting to stretch out. That polka dot banner will come into sight as we go around the right hand bend. Then it will be 200 meters from that polka dot banner, but it is by no means over. One solo rider at the front, Mendakowitz behind him. Ritter, Graves, Khan are coming. They are coming faster onto his heels. This is not over. This is going to be about who's got anything left at the very top because Ritter has really pushed on here. But Mendakowicz has found something even more. 
He's gone even deeper. He's on the front. Look at the effort coming out at the moment. He's revving as well. 80 revs per minute. He's absolutely nailing it, kicking those pedals through the bottom of the bucket. At the moment, he's really pushing. Ritter is coming behind. Seven and a half watts per kilo. He's just holding higher watts per kilo than Mendakowicz as they come up here. Ritter now takes that polka dot skin suit. He's a rider on the hills. Ben Detti looking good at the moment in third place. And he is leading a train of riders. There's nothing to separate them now. Who has got anything left? This is that classic sprinter's clock. Run up to the top. It levels up. It gets more like a sprint than it does a climb. But these riders have kicked time and time again. But they've got to have something left. 10 watts per kilo coming from Ritter. 10.2. Mendakowicz, has he got anything? He hasn't. Moritz Ritter takes category two here today. What a ride. Coming up over the climb to take victory from Messi. Mendakowicz in second. It's going to be Daniel Bendetti taking away third place here today. Another absolutely storming ride here in Category 2 with Ritter, our fastest rider up over the top for the Wattage Wizards. Another great ride now behind. It has all changed in Category 1 because Michael Kaminsky has used those lower slopes to attack. He has got four seconds on Arnie Yakos. He's got four seconds on Jason Osborne. It's open to five. And Kaminsky coming up here, 550 watts at the moment. And counting behind, this group are going to have to work. And they're going to have to work quick. That gap at the moment is eight seconds. It could well come down, but it's got a very little distance to do that. And the way that Michael Kaminsky is climbing here, super fluid here. Nine watts per kilo, nine and a half. He's on this run to the line. He knows it's only a few seconds left of effort before he goes over the top. Osborne is coming behind him. So is Zach Nair. Nair is climbing incredibly well. He's on his way at 11.8 watts per kilo. Kaminsky's at eight and a half, but time I think will have run out because Michael Kaminsky is going to take this. He's going to come through. It's going to be seven, eight seconds clear from the riders behind Michael Kaminsky, the winner in category one. And it's going to be a fight in over the line. I think that was a roll on the line of there. As they came through, Osborne just taking there. Then it's going to be Safford Sadie and Annie Jacobs coming through in fourth and fifth place. They're coming through thick and fast. Uh, it is going to be Ollie Joe's our next finisher coming up to the line. He's got Johan Noren chasing him. That attack earlier on and not coming to uh, the front. That really cost him time. So our category two riders in the green there. Bendetti taking third and Dakowitz taking second. And Ritter taking top spot in category one. Top spot going to Michael Kaminsky in first place. Second place, Jason Osborne. Third place, Zach Nair. Fourth place, Sai Safrazetti. It's going to be a fifth place rounding out the prize money for Arnie Jacobs. Sixth is going to be Ollie Jones. Seventh, Johan Noren. And eighth place for David Talbot. Good to see Zach Nair absolutely on form at the top of that climb. Osborne just rolling him on the line, the Olympian, just holding it to, to take a second place place. And as we see, Hayden Pucker at the moment being pursued by Mr. X100. Sergio Hoyos just seen Mr. X100 coming over the top. And this is Pucker now. He's looking over his shoulders. Uh, well, he might because uh, the rider who is chasing him is Mr. X100, a rider that you know is going to take this all the way in to the line. But I think uh, Pucker, the under-23 rider who rode so well in the American Esports Championships, now currently going to be our next rider coming in to the finish. He's going to be chased to the line by Mr. X100. But you can see as they come up and over the line, all these riders really are working hard. Zach Nair's heart rate starting to come down 131 at the moment. Our ninth place, well, it went to Pim Van Diemen there. And the riders are still continuing to come in and through the line. And uh, Pim Van Diemen, the rider who took the uh, sprint jersey, going through in ninth place. 10th, 11th, 12th, 13th, 14th, and all the way through the entire race field will be available at www.mywish.com slash results in categories 1, 2, 3, and 4. 
Don't forget, of course, you can watch all of the footage back on the My Wish YouTube channel, as well as all the great videos that are coming out about what we've got uh, available. You can check out the verification process on there. Hayden Pucker just coming in and through in 10th position here today. So a great debut by Hayden Pucker here on the My Wish Championship style race that is the Sunday Race Club. It's so worthy of a championship every single Sunday. I'll tell you something, we should award medals every single Sunday because these riders give it absolutely everything. Now, the 11th rider in over the line, Mr. X100, comes through to finish. UAE clan team leader coming in ahead of his teammate, Michael Nusson, today. But for those full results, make sure you go on to the MikeWoosh.com website. Please do give me a follow. It's at Matt Fix the Pain. You can get hold of Emma at Biking underscore Emma. Please do give us a follow. Let us know uh, what you're up to, where you come from, what sort of riding you do, what your favorite route to ride and race is, of course, what your favorite track is, and do you have any pets at home? In amongst all that, don't forget, of course, that you can catch up with all the details on my wish at my wish across social media. You can subscribe. Please do subscribe to the YouTube channel and to give everybody a follow. It really does help. I hope you've enjoyed the racing here today. Next week is our finals where the team competition comes in with that whopping 50,000 AED for the first prize in category one team competition. Let's see who's going to take that. At the moment, Emma is midway through the women's race on Sunday Race Club. I'm going to join it. I hope you will join me there or maybe even watch back from the start and see how that race has progressed. But it's time for me to head over to that studio from myself, Matt Payne, from all of the team at My Wish. Thank you very much for watching. Stay safe. Ramadan Mubarak. <laughs>